Hello and welcome back to the Reaper. So we're working through our videos of setting the joystick and keyboard controls for various uh, planes. Today it's the turn of the F5E Tiger 2. So I'm going to show you basically how I have my controls set on my joystick. Now my joystick or my HOTAS is an X56 Cytec Rhino. The one you will have will almost certainly be different, so you won't be able to copy my controls directly. Uh, but I'll ex as I do them, I'll explain where I have them on the joystick roughly, and then you can get a rough, um, roughly the same setup as me if you want. Um, and then throughout my tutorials, I do for the planes, it will just help if you have roughly the same control setup as me. In addition, there's a, another general rule that you should always stick to. So if you're like me and you've got lots of planes, uh, then it's important to when you're setting up your controls to keep them as uniform as possible between the different, different planes so for instance if you have a switch a two-way switch that you use for landing gear then make sure you have that same two-way switch set up for all of the different planes that way everything's as similar as possible and um, it just reduces learning time massively basically so let's crack on with it so we're going to go options here then controls then we're going to go to our f5 F5, where is the F5 sim? Okay, now I've already got my controls set up, so what I'm going to do is basically go over them again, tape over them, and then you can see uh, how I do it uh, that way. So I always start with the axis control, so axis in uh, this drop down box here. Uh, so I should explain this is the particular action on the left column here. Uh, this is the assigned keyboard control. This is the assigned uh, left HOTAS control, so your HOTAS is split into a thrust lever on the left and a control stick on the right, and this is the HOTAS right part, the control stick here. Okay, so the first thing I want to set is the zoom view. Uh, this is very important, it allows you to zoom. Uh, it's a bit like fo kind of focusing on something with your eyes, it's something you will need basically just to function. Uh, so zoom view in axis controls is the one. I get that over here. I want it on my left HOTAS here. I've got a kind of turny knob that I can use for this because it's an analog control. I'm going to double mouse left click on it like that. Now I'm going to turn the knob that I want to set to it on my HOTAS. Turn it over its full range of movement. There it's picked it up. It's called Joy Z. Okay, and then test it. And you can see it's moving there. Okay, the next thing I want to do is thrust. Now it has two engines, so I'm going to split my thrust lever in two. Yours may or may not be able to do this, but if uh, you can't split it into two, then you just use this single thrust command here. Uh, right, so I'm going to go thrust left, move its full range of movement, and it's picked it up. Okay, thrust right is going to be this one here, the right split. Okay, and now just test them. That's lefty, that's righty. Beautiful. Right, let's uh, sync them back up. Lovely. Um, I don't want any of this stuff. The next thing I want is my rudder. I'm going to put it on my control stick. I don't have pedals because my feet aren't very good. So I'm going to use the control stick, right HOTAS, double click on that. And I'm going to twist the joystick because it has a twist function. Okay. Right, so check it works. And it does, and we'll want to add a uh, roll on all of your aircraft, pitch, roll, and rudder. You must have a curve set. You won't be able to fly it properly without a curve. So, so select it there, axis tune. Um, and we've got curvature down at the bottom here. And it's on zero currently. We want to put about uh, 25. And what a curve does is it allows more fine movement around the center of the joystick's movement. And um, and more uh, the opposite basically at the extreme. So it means it's easier to do fine controls in the middle, which you'll need for formation flying and stuff like that. Uh, just notice that the joystick marker, which is red, is outside of the black box, which means we'll need to add some dead zone. So we need to add. You see, a dead zone adds that flat part. You will want that red bit to be in the flat part. So dead zone of six should just about do it. Okay. Uh, let's go for roll, so I'm going to go left on the joystick, right on the joystick, and it's picked it up. Check it. Lovely. Axis tune. So we've got no creep, so we didn't need any dead zone. It's right in the middle there, so we do need our standard curvature of 25. You may find uh, different to 25 being useful, but 25 over the years i found is the best. Uh, for me at least. Pitch. Let's move the joystick forwards and back. Okay, check that. Lovely. Axis tune. 25, don't need any dead zone there, it's, it's inside the black box. Okay, and that's the axis done. 
Uh, next, we're going to move on to the left toe test. And to do that, rather than um, going to these different areas here, I prefer to use the search command. So I can set exactly what I want. Right, so I've got a uniform, standardized, two-way switch that I've got on my left toe test I use for my landing gear. So search, and then landing gear. Lots of landing gear. So let's look for the one that's important. There we go. Landing gear, LG down, LG up. So... The one I usually use for down is there, ping, and the one I use for up is there, ping. And that's the landing gear done. Next, um, I want to have the two, uh, the two position switch I usually set for air brakes. So, we're going to delete that out, out of there, we're going to type air brake, and nothing's come up. Uh, so air space brake, nothing's come up. Uh, so what's the other alternative? Well, they often call them speed brake, S-P-E-E-D. But there they are. Um, now there's lots of commands, but let's just choose the ones we want. We want in and out. Nothing else. We everything else is is just less relevant. I want just these two commands. It can be in or out. Keep it simple. Um, so in it's the same com commands I use for all of my aircraft, that one and the other part of that two point switch there. Pa -pa, lovely. Right, let's move to the top of this uh, left toe task control and we've got the command I always use for my uncage. So by standard, a, uh, a, a IR guided missile is caged to bore site. Bore site means the uh, where the plane is pointing basically. So that means it can only detect heat sources that are directly in front of it uh, that's called cage and we can uncage it with a button called uncage which allows it to not only search along bore site but track aircraft it allows the missile IR so you could track aircraft off a of bore site i.e. at different angles uh, so go and have a play with that it's something you will need uh, right so let's uh, search uncage one word it probably has it is and there it is and um, I'm going to have it on the left toe test on my usual ungauge switch there. Pow. That's that done. Right, the next is the countermeas uh, countermeasures button I have. It's a two-phase switch on my left toe test. So let's see if we can go and find it. So it's probably easiest just to search for flare. And there it is. We've got flare. Now this is a bit funny. It's flare and chaff button. Um, so I'm not sure how one button controls both of them. Uh, if someone can remind me, that would be useful. I'm guessing it flares and chaffers at the same time. Um, so, so be it. I'm going to set both my chair, uh, flare and my chaff button to this button then, basically. And remember, when you're going to use this uh, uh, flare and chaff in the plane, there's, on the left console, there's two knobs that you'll need to set to activate it. Okay, that's that. Uh, what else have we got? Um, this is a personal preference. Whoops. Snap view 5 under the views is a particular um, view that I like to use. I can see I've forgotten to set it here. Um, and it's just, it zooms in, it's good for dogfights, and it's this button you can hold, just zooms in a bit basically. So I'm going to set that, you may not want to. That's on my left toe test again. And that is the left toe test done. Apart from auto start, I like to have an auto start so I can start my plane and uh, get on and do other things. So let's try auto start, there it is. And I've got these on the kind of hard iron switches on the base of the left HOTAS. On. Same I have in all of the planes. Off. There. Right, so that is our left HOTAS done. Next, we're going to move on to the right HOTAS with the control stick. Okay, the control stick. First of all, I've got a button at the front I like to use for wheel brake. Uh, so let's see what we can find. that search wheel. Uh, there it is. So you can brake wheel, brake left or right. I just want the standard wheel brake that does all of the brake, all the wheel brake. Both left and right, that's what I'm trying to say. And let's set that. So notice we're sitting in the right column here of our hotels. Um, while we're down here, I also see we've got no steering button. This is something you'll have for most of your planes. In this uh, type of aircraft, it's a push and hold type affair. Uh, so to do the nose steering, I'll push and hold this button here. And I've got a standard one on my right uh, control stick. So there we go, like that. Next, we're going to look at the triggers. So in this aircraft, there are two triggers. So let's just search trigger. First detent and second detent. My particular trigger only has one detent, so that's what just what I have to do. I'll set it up as second detent, and it's my standard trigger one. Pow. OK, 
Okay, and the second trigger in this aircraft is going to be called weapons release, I imagine. So, search weapon, and there it is, weapon release, and I'm going to set that as trigger two. Right, so next I want the trim. Uh, all aircraft have trim, that's, it's an essential part of controlling an aircraft. So let's search trim, and it just doesn't come up with, let's try trimmer. There it is. So you've got trim left, right, pull and push. So let's set those up. So I've got a four-way switch on the top of my right control stick. In fact, I've got three of them. One of them I always use for trim. So let's just get that done. Left, right. And this just goes back to what we're saying about always using the same controls for all of your aircraft where possible. It's not always possible but keep them as, as same and as logical and as uniform as possible. That's my trim done. Next, uh, the, the four-way switch below that four-way switch on my right stick I always use as TDC. Uh, that is the target designated controller. You'll have that or a variant of it for almost every aircraft available. So let's search TDC. There it is. And so this allows us to move the control selector around on our radar screen. So exactly the same. It's a four-way switch, so down, left, right, and up. Now, sticking with the radar, we'll have a lock-unlock button. Uh, now, I believe it's called a quiet in this, and that is almost certainly going to be uh, abbreviated to ACQ, ACQ. There is a radar acquire button. It means basically lock, unlock is, uh, is what it means. So I've got to double click on that on the right and there's a button on top of my stick, power, and I use it for all of my planes as lock, unlock. That's that done. Uh, now I've got my sensor control button. So in all of the planes that have sensors, which is most of them, I've got something called a sensor control four-way switch. It's just another four-way switch on the left, on the top left of my control stick. And for this, the most for this aircraft, the most relevant uh, is called dogfight. Let me go and find it. Okay, so you have these dogfight modes. Uh, now I haven't flown this plane in a long time, and I can't remember basically exactly what they do. I know they basically search in front of the aircraft, look for a hostile, and allow the aircraft to predict its gun sights and its missile. Uh, firing better be uh, once it's in a dogfight, but I can't tell you exactly which ones what they do now because it's uh, been too long So it's, you've got aft Center and forward so get the manual out read which ones actually do what and let me know please because I've forgotten in fact If you do know let me know please because um, I'm not gonna have time to check that out anymore uh, so I'm gonna put it on my sensor control four-way switch and I'm gonna go center it's gonna be up Aft is going to be left. There's no real reason for this, uh, for which one I'm binding to which. It's just forwards is forwards. You know, that is a bit stupid, isn't it? Um, forwards should probably be forwards. So let's change that while we're here. Forwards, we're going to put forward on our four-way switch. Aft, we're going to put aft. And centre, let's put that as left. And we might as well put it as right as well. So you can put it as, as multiple commands. Okay, so that's our sensors changed to be a bit slightly more efficient. Uh, so that is our whole control stick done now, which is pretty cool. So there's only one more command that we need, and that is to change the antenna, the radar antenna, elevation up and down. You will always need to track a radar, control it to aim up and down because the computer, the aircraft will not do it for you. Um, I don't have any switches left on my HODAS, so we're going to have to put this to the keyboard. I, for radar commands for all of my aircraft that can't fit on my HODAS, I have it on my numpad, which is the rightmost section of the keyboard with, you know, the numbers and some plus and the minuses and whatnot. And let's go search, um, probably antenna, antenna, there we go, elevation tilt up and down, so I always have down as numpad 2, I always as up as numpad 8. Uh, now you can you can zoom in and out on this radar but um, I like using the, the actual switch in the cockpit so I'm happy to do that. I shan't bind any commands to it for the keys. Uh, okay and that's that done basically. I hope that helps and I'll see you later.